This is code.org. Let's see what we have. The user list class obtains user input to create an array list of items entered of items entered. It has a method read input to obtain user input until the user enters Q for quit. User list, user list, read input. Okay. Oh, and then if it equals Q, we quit. Um, add item. Oh, okay. This all looks standard. Uh, to add items to list, which uses the find position method to determine the location to add the item to the list. Find position. Ah, except we don't have that. Okay. Write the find position to find and return the index location to insert input text in the list. Well, interesting. So they're not specifying. So they're not actually telling us right now what they mean by correct position, right? I am going to assume they are attempting to ask for it to be alphabetized because this lesson is about comparing strings. And to do that, we would use compare to. So find the correct position. So to do that, we're going to be alphabetizing it. And so we're going to need to, to find a position, we're going to have to loop through all the words currently in our array list, which is list items. Um, I'll go with the traditional for loop this time. Um, and I'll have int uh, position. So this will be the position we want to locate it in. I'll set this to zero. And now I won't need to loop through our list. So four, and I'll do int i is equal to zero. i is going to be less than list items dot. Now remember, this is an array list, so we have to do size. And then I'm going to do I plus plus. Okay. Now for this, we need to be looping through the items. And then we need to check to see if this word that we're currently on is less than uh, the word or, or is greater than the word that we have. So for list items. And let me go ahead and do um, string current is equal to list items dot get i and now i need to know hey is this position right now and what we're going to want to check for is if this current word comes before uh the our input word right so we need to know um and to do that we're going to use compare to and now remember what compare to does compare to means the word that comes first so let's do if um, I'm just going to say current dot, and I might actually have to change this, but let's see. Compare to uh, input text, okay? And I'll say uh, is less than zero, because otherwise they're the same word. So, and let me finish this because otherwise I'll forget. All right, right now, if the current word is less than the input word, that means the current word comes before my input word. Right. So if the current word was a and what I just entered was C, C is not a word, but you get the point. Well, then I know that this needs to go beyond that. So if the current word is going to be less than the inputted word, I'm going to say that the uh, new position, the position add word at just try to make this clear the position to add the word at or the index to add the word at even uh position to add the word at would going to be equal to i right but plus one because i need to go one beyond the current position i know that much for sure okay and then if it is not though i'm done oh that's interesting so I could even stop the loop or I could do a wall loop. But for now, we'll leave this. So if it's not, we're done. And then I'm going to need to return this guy. Position to add word at. All right. Let's give this a shot and see what I messed up. Boom. 
Okay, so print, uh, add, read input and print. Uh, to print, I would just do system dot out dot print ln, and then um, and then I can just do my list. Okay, let me add some logging so I can see what's going on with this. And I'm going to actually save this compare to value right up here. And I'll just save it in something called compare for now, just for debugging purposes. Okay. And let's see if I broke stuff. Enter your list. Uh, Fred, Apple. Nice. Oh, what I should do, actually, I'm going to print my list while I'm doing this each time. X-ray. Red. Cool. And you can see what this is doing. So I wanted to print this out for a very specific reason. I want to show you how it's actually running. So what happens? I throw in a word, right? And we end up in read input. As long as I don't hit Q, I'm not going to quit. And we start adding words to our list. Input text, input next line, add item, input text. All right. So it needs to run our method add item. Zoop slap right there and whatever word i just inputted is pass now i if that word's not quit or q which it's not we then run list items right the list of items we're going to add to so this array list right here we're telling it we're going to add to it and inside of this we're going to go ahead and execute our method we could have had it add to a variable up here right i could say something like int new position is equal to this if I wanted. If that's more readable for you, go for it. Uh, but they didn't do that. So regardless, we're going to be adding to, uh, we're adding this word, but we have to find the position. This is the word that we're going to be adding. This is the word that is going to get passed to find position. This is, so now find position, input text. And I say, okay, where are we going to add this? We're going to add it at position zero. But then I start looping through all the other words. And what I am looking for is any word that is coming before this. And so if a word does come before that, right, if the current word compared to the inputted word is less than zero, meaning that word would come before the word we inputted, if this was apple and this was zebra, well, apple and the alphabet would come first. So this would be less than zero. It would be negative 26 uh, for that in particular. And therefore, position to add word at is going to now be set, right? So this is true. The current would then be coming before. And we drop down into this and I say, okay, well, I know whatever index I'm at, we'll say this is the index zero. I know that zebra needs to come after apple. So now it's index zero, i is equal to zero, i plus one is one. So now our new index is one, I hit the bottom, I go back to the top. Now let's say we're at the end of the list, the list was only one word, that's fine, the loop's over, we hit return, and what gets returned a one, which is great, because we're just gonna smack zebra onto the end of our list. Now let's say we're not at the end of our list, let's say there's another word that, I don't know, unicorn, and so we drop back in, current word, get list items i, well, we now have been at index one, that's unicorn, yada, yada, yada. Unicorn, being the current word, still would come before zebra, so this would be less than zero. So now the new position would be index one plus one, which would be index two, and we will keep going, which is why you see these results. I was trying to show what it's actually going to look like. I'm going to get rid of this because it's not necessary, and I don't need to be printing up the list. That is looking good. One more time. But uh bread, car, sky, yum, zebra. Cool. Onward.